so welcome back everybody this video is going to cover why we need so many channels on our artist radios and the reason I'm doing this video is um, if you're a longtime follower you know I always try to stay positive and I'm always trying to share experiences I've done myself I don't try to say uh, like speculate that much unless I'm like in the design mode okay so the whole goal of my channel is to share things that work so that if you try it it should work for you okay but the other day I got a really interesting um, comment on one of my posts and it, it shocked me it and, it and it kind of made me mad I mean it it, it, it upset me and it takes a lot to get me upset uh, because trolls don't bother me all of that but when somebody fundamentally posts something that is just so blatantly wrong, you, you question why are they doing that? You know, I don't believe there's that many stupid people, okay? I just don't like the word stupid. I like to think that people are afraid of new technology maybe, or maybe they're afraid to learn, or they're so set in their ways that they feel um, the only way to feel secure is by putting down other modern things so and I know I may not be making sense I'm trying to get this out of my brain that sees it a certain way into words but one of the things that really bothers me about model aviation is anytime somebody's negative where people are trying to learn or to achieve goals young people coming into the hobby right now have it really hard because there's information overload out there. Young people 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, had it really hard because all the old farts thought that they were the only ones that could fly a model airplane. So we have this group of younger people that are starting to fly on dirt roads or fly in parks or fly in their backyard, and they don't want to be part of the model aviation community because of egos, um, and I don't, I don't think people are trying to intentionally be mean. They're just insecure. Most of these people that are putting people down are just cowards, and they're, they're insecure, and they're hurting the hobby. So when I read this about how many channels you really need to fly model aircraft, it was just so obscenely wrong that um and, and it was a post to one of my videos i made about landing model aircraft and i talked about all the different options you've got in radios that can help you become a better rc pilot and the person basically said um you don't need more than a four channel radio anything above that is glitz and glamour and I, i'm paraphrasing here okay and it was a really long post that was just so outrageously wrong from my own personal experience that I decided to do this video so I'm really sorry I got so talkative here but I have an awful lot of passion to help people have success in model aviation okay so when you think of the radios we have today you can still get a six channel radio or you can get up to like 32 channels or more but you you need to decide why do I need the particular radio I have Okay, if you want retracts or flaps, you're going to have to have more than four channels. If you want to have an easy life in setting up an airplane, if you have a servo for each aileron, you can put those on separate channels. And then you can go in and fine-tune them instead of having to use some kind of a, um, you know, a servo matcher or something that we used to use back in the day. Modern radios also have a lot of other things that I don't want to say it makes being an RC pilot necessarily easier, but it makes our the way we control our information flow or our uh, workload makes it much easier. So the only way I know to explain this is the way that radios have worked for me okay when I first started in RC I started with a Cox Sandway four-channel radio and it was on a glider that only needed three channels 
got my first glow powered plane, which was four channels. But immediately, if I needed flaps, I needed a fifth channel. If I needed any type of a speed brake, because I was a tinkerer, I was a maker, I had speed brakes on my uh, 40 size planes back in the 80s, late 80s. Um, if you wanted retracts, you had to have another. So I went to an Airtronics uh, six-channel radio and thought that was really cool because I had the two extra channels I needed. But then I got me a Futaba, the 9C, I think it was. I can't remember how many channels that was. But it gave me the ability to expand very quickly into making the workload on me easier. You know, I could have a channel pro aileron, a channel pro elevator. I could have the nose gear on a different channel than the rudder. That way, if I needed to tweak and uh, adjust my nose, skill, nose gear steering without affecting the rudder, I could do that. So I started realizing that these extra switches and knobs on our radios are actually pretty cool. Okay, and I'm sorry I'm so talkative here. So let's go to the next picture. So. Here is my MSL-2, and I want to talk about the type of airplanes we need and how that kind of goes into the type of radios that we might want, okay? Um, it's, it's super important for you to really get to know everything about your radio because you can buy a radio that has so many bells and whistles that you think, well, I don't need any of them. And this person who did this post makes me think of that person that just doesn't want to take the time to read a manual, doesn't want to take the time to get to know a radio. So when they say, um, I would never own an airplane that needs more than four channels, they're missing out on so much of the hobby. They're missing out on so much that you can have fun with, okay? So realistically, could this airplane here fly on four channels? Well, if I was just doing the rudder, elevator, ailerons, and throttle, yeah, I could make this big airplane a four-channel radio. But this big airplane has differential brakes, and I'll talk a lot more about that in a minute. But what's really cool about differential brakes is you lock up one wheel, let the other wheel spin, and you can pivot right around that wheel when you're parking it, and it looks so scale that everybody watching is like, well, wait a minute, is that differential brakes? Because not a lot of people see brakes on big model airplanes. I mean, there are brakes, but differential brakes, that's pretty rare. There's also something else about this airplane that's kind of cool, and I'll talk about that at the very end of this, that really makes such a difference in the way people observe and watch this airplane. Some of my fans have said this is their absolute favorite part about this airplane. But technically speaking, could I fly it on four channel? I could. Now, I'd have to have some kind of servo match in there to be able to match the ailerons, uh, or you know, adjusting the linkage to get exactly takes forever. But I do have a channel for each uh, aileron. I have a channel for each elevator. And then I have a channel on the rudder. And I've got a channel on my pilot figure. And then I got a channel for each wheel uh, brake. So right there, I've added quite a few channels in this airplane. Now, I do have mixing and I have uh, exponential, I have my dual rates, um, all of those things just to make my flying experience a little bit more fun, okay? And when you think about this aircraft and how many flights I have on it, I always try to say to people who, who, who always want to put down something in the hobby is, do you hate your cruise control in your car? Because that's a luxury. We don't have to have cruise control. You know, do you hate the fact that you have a rear wiper uh, on your window on the back of your car? Those weren't there when I was a kid. They're there now, and I like it. There's a lot of things that enhance our user experience that makes this hobby pretty cool. Okay? Before I get too far into this, I do want to talk about a uh, company that I absolutely love. And they're awesome if you go to rtlfasteners.com and you will find bolts, nuts, blind nuts, metric, standard, washers, uh, servo screws. If you use the top secret code DA30, you'll get 30% off any order that you spend more than $50 on. 
and I love working with these people. They're awesome and really neat. So now let's just talk for a moment about the radio. We talked about the type of plane you might need, and I used my MSL2 as an example. But what's really neat about a modern radio is once you learn it, when you go to set up an airplane, you're like, oh, I can use this or I can use that. You start realizing that all this stuff isn't in there just as, I'm going to try to paraphrase, this person said, all these extra switches and things are there so they can add r rack up the price of the radio. Not if you read the manual, not if you know how to use everything in your radio. If you really take the time to know every function of that radio, it is absolutely spectacular what we can do with our aircraft. Okay? When you think about the endpoint adjust adjustments, when you think about the kill switch for our motors, when you think about uh, the fail safe that's in a computer radio, when you think about um, the sub trims, when you think about the system types, okay? If you're going to have a glider that's going to have the crow effect of the flaps and ailerons and all of that, that's in the most modern radios. There's so much there if you learn. Um, there's V-tail setup. There's a flying wing setup, a delta. There's so much in these radios that if you want to take the time to read the manual from the front to back, plug in some servos and tinker, or grab a park flyer and, and put a receiver in there and tinker, uh, get whatever your EDF is and realize how many channels you can actually you know, split up, you'll start to realize that we do need all this stuff in our radios. And that's the reason some people say, well, my radio doesn't have enough. Some of the people like the more open source radios right now because you can assign any channel to anything which means you're really doing a freaking deep dive into using all the power of that radio. But to say that it's silly to have more than four channels, it, it just, I, I think is in a way is just showing this person's, in, in, they're incapable of seeing modernization. They're incapable of seeing what we're doing with these radios. Um, I don't mind it when somebody comes on to one of my videos that I have like 500 likes, everybody's praised it, and somebody comes in and says, this, this, this video is a piece of crap. Big stinking turd. I don't care. You know, you're, you're, you can have your opinion. But when you're posting about, we don't need more than a four channel radio for this hobby, basically. Or, you know, I've never flown anything more than four channels and I don't need anything more than four channels. I don't want somebody who's younger to read that and go, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I just need to get a four-channel radio. Because I guarantee you a year later that four-channel radio is going to be sitting in a drawer somewhere and you're not using it. Because once you learn this hobby, once you get addicted, once you realize this hobby is like crack cocaine and meth and everything, all in a big old uh, edible cake, you're going to want more channels, okay? You are, you are going to want more channels okay so for god's sakes if you are a younger modeler and you're watching some of these videos and you see somebody say oh you don't need more than a four channel radio if you're going to fly a trainer and that's all you're going to fly for the next 50 years you could probably get by on a four channel radio but nobody once they get addicted to this hobby stays with that few of channels at least no one i've met except this guy who posted who's got three times more experience than me, been flying for 5,000 years, knew Abraham Lincoln, and says all you need is a four-channel radio. And look, my longtime followers, I know I normally don't go after people who post things. But we live in a world right now that we have so many modern things at our fingertips that can make life really freaking cool. And it's awesome. So here's another reason you probably want more than a four-channel radio. This this airplane here has, oh crap, I forgot how many. I think it's uh, 28 servos. So you're going to have your flaps. You're going to have your, your uh, cargo door. You're going to have independent nose wheel uh, steering that has to stop steering when the nose gear goes up into the fuselage. And that's where I use a mix, and I put that on a switch. Actually, it's on the retract switch. I tell it to mirror the retract switch. So when I flip that switch, the nose gear quits steering as it goes up into the fuselage. Okay? You, 
when you build big models, you're going to want all the channels you can get. Now, do I need 32 channels? Um, there's only been one plane that I wish I maybe had that many. I can normally get away pretty good with 14, 12 to 14 channels. We'll work on virtually anything I've built. Yes, some servos might be paired up. I'm going to have to tweak to get those right. But me personally, I've never needed more than, I think, 12 channels right now. Well, I've never uh, had a plane fly yet. My Fra Emma Stein, which is my transport plane, it most likely will use uh, 14 channels. The C-130, I think I ended up using 14 channels when it was done. Um, I tried to keep it at 12 because I always wanted to have two extra channels. I do think I used all 14. But here, now I'm going to talk about some mixing and stuff. And I really want you to realize that if you really know your radio, you really play inside the software, I mean the, the screens, you can do some really cool things. So believe it or not, on this big airplane, really the only mixes I have is the rudder to the left and right brake. And then I have the aileron to auxiliary three. And I'll talk about auxiliary three in a minute. I'm kind of keeping it a secret till the end. But this airplane absolutely is awesome with that, that differential braking. Okay. And um, that's all I want to say about that. Then you got to think about your flying surfaces size. Some flying surfaces will take multiple servos. Okay. This is just an example from Futaba where they've loaded up this 3D plane with servos. And if this was a 150 inch aerobatic airplane, it would need all these servos. This is another reason that you would love to have a lot of channels. So many of these are their own independent channel that you can go in and set the sub trim on to get them all matched. Okay. So that's, that's one reason you got to think about your number of channels also. Very few people nowadays um, fly just a 30 or 40 inch wing airplane. I, no, I shouldn't say that. There's a boatload, a crap load of park flyers like that. And those park flyers will probably fly on four channels every day. But once you get bored with that, or I, I shouldn't say bored because I'm not bored with any of my park flyers. Um, once you decide that your design juices take you down a road where you want more channels, four channels won't be enough. Now I'm going to talk about that mysterious extra channel on my MSL2. <clears throat> and let me make this widescreen for a minute. So this is baby Olive that I put in my airplane that has creeped a lot of people out. But her head moves around and looks wherever I want it to go. I've got it on an independent channel. And I also mix it to the rudder sometimes. So as I'm doing coordinated turns, she's kind of looking into the turn. But the thing is, is that when you think about the number of channels you want on an airplane, um, next year, if I, if I, if, if my plans is to make her eyes blink, to make her suck on her pacifier, and make her head tilt a little bit, and that's going to take five more channels, okay? And sometimes people go to a different radio when they're doing dolls like this, okay? And they have two radios flying the airplane. I preferably would like to have one radio flying the airplane because that way if I'm at the flying field and there's nobody there that knows how to operate the robotic baby there, you know, I don't have to have, you know, another person help me. But um, this was the fan favorite at Seth was everybody saying, is that baby's head looking around? And yes, that baby looks around and I love it, and it's something cool we can do with this hobby, and it's just really, really awesome. So look, I didn't mean for this video to go long. I thought it'd be like 10 minutes. Again, I'm at 20 minutes, but look, everybody, my passion for this hobby is success. My passion for this hobby is that nobody gets deterred, okay, and... I just see so much stuff out there that I, I, I literally wish I was a superhero. I could save the day because there's so much disinformation out there. There's so many opinions that are completely worthless for the young modeler trying to have success. And look, I know everybody can have an opinion. Okay. Opinions are like your a-hole. Okay. Everybody's got one. But I don't want people to go out and spend money on a four channel radio and then realize within months, oh my God, I needed more channels. I'm not even sure if they still sell four channel radios. I'm sure they do. 
but um, if you're going to start with a radio, start with six channels. That way you can at least have flaps and retracts. If you're getting a computer radio, you're normally going to start off at like 12 or plus channels. Okay. Sorry for this being so wordy, everybody. I'm just trying, I'm trying to uh, just help everybody have success in model aviation. Okay. So if you're a longtime follower, I'm sure you've already subscribed and you've already liked this video. If you're new, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to build my YouTube to get the message out there uh, that I'm trying to save the world with one video at a time <laughs> for model aviation. And as you always know, I, if you're a longtime follower, as I end my videos this last year, I'm going to talk about youth and aviation. The only way model aviation is going to continue for another 100 years is if we get the younger uh, people, and I'm talking the age 10 and up, especially 10 to like 21. That is the group that we need to really engage and say, welcome to our clubs, welcome to our videos, welcome to our fly-ins. Can we help you learn what questions you have? Because literally on my Facebook, I get probably in a week, five or 10 private messages from younger people saying, hey, thanks for doing these videos. I can't stand this club or this club wouldn't let me and my dad even fly FPV. And it is horrible the way that some young people in this um, hobby are treated. And keep in mind though, when I first started, I was flying off a softball field. Then I flew off a little bitty practice football field. Then I flew in my backyard. Because I had gone to a club when I was young, and the club was just a bunch of old guys standing around smoking their cigarettes, trying to be the biggest egos in the field. And I finally found a club that I liked. And now this is back in the 80s, people. So this isn't a problem that just happened in the last 10 years. Since the 80s, we've had these old fart, egotistical people that feel like the only way they can overcome their insecurities is by dominating other people. And when it's younger people wanting to come to the club, you should embrace them, um, ask them if they need help flying. You know, um, young gentleman on Facebook reached out to me and said, my instructor is horrible. He's a real pilot, a CFI, a CFII, all this stuff, but what he's teaching me to fly my model airplanes is just doesn't make sense. And this kid spent a lot of time on a simulator, and this person said, I'm a real pilot, you don't need the simulator. The model aircraft simulators are one of the greatest tools we have. Greatest tools ever. So here is a steaming turd that is basically telling a young kid, don't use a simulator, listen to me and I'll make you a real pilot. And he's crashed a plane. As an instructor, I never had a kid crash the plane unless he flew it on his own. Knock on wood, but I've never had anybody I taught to fly a model airplane crash it. I either had a buddy box, or I stood right next to them, or I stood behind them and, and held the radio with them, but I've never had a student crash a plane. Had them break a lot of props, take the nose gear off, stuff like that. But it's unbelievable that this CFI, CFII, know-it-all person who says he's a better pilot, who's an instructor at a club, let a kid crash his plane. It's crazy. So I am done with my little editorial that I always put at the end of my videos. So make sure you engage youth. Make sure you bring them in. Uh, if not, they're going to find some place to fly, and then one day our clubs are irrelevant. People are just going to start quitting the clubs because these kids are going to grow up and not be part of that club, and the old farts are going to die their timely deaths, and clubs are just going to say, well, where did everybody go? Rock on, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for watching my videos and following and liking, and I'll see you next time. Rock on. Bye.